right, let's try this again. Welcome here to another edition of the Husker Online post game live show from Boulder, Colorado. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washer. For the next hour or so, uh, we are going to try to figure out what happened to Nebraska here in Boulder, Colorado. But guys, maybe it's pretty dang simple. They turned the ball over four times. Uh, Nebraska's offense now eight turnovers over the last two games. Uh, 24 total points scored as a unit, as an offense, when you break down the Minnesota game and then today's game in Colorado. Matt Rule, 0-2, as uh, they had two great opportunities to, you know, make a statement for Nebraska football. You're on Fox Television on Thursday night, national TV. Here you are on big noon kickoff with the eyes of the country, probably over 10 million viewers, and just another squandered opportunity where it felt like a part of that second quarter, Nebraska was about ready to seize control of this football game. Start right there, Sean. Uh, you know, I, we were talking in the press box in the second quarter. I thought Colorado was a little rattled. I mean, it was zero zero. You know, well into the second quarter, I thought Shadur Sanders looked a little bit discombobulated. Not not a lot, but a little. And then the meltdown ensued. And you know, Jeff Sims, I, I think inexplicably drops a snap that leads to three points, and then he. Throws a, throws a pick, which is, I mean, he just did the same thing he's we've seen him do. We well, saw him do in Minnesota. You've seen him do at Georgia Tech. You could see it easily from where we were sitting, what was, what was going to happen. He rolled to his right, stared at the receiver, threw it. Defensive back made a pretty easy play on the ball. Jer- then, they, then they score a touchdown. It's 10-0 and a tone set. Jeremy in the super chat comes right away and says, uh, Robin, just switch Sims and uh, Sanders at quarterback. Change nothing else. Who wins? Are we really just a QB away from winning? Thanks for all you guys do. What do you think, Robin? I think they're two and zero. If Shadur Sanders is Nebraska's starting quarterback, I think they're two and zero. If Casey Thompson is their starting oh quarterback, oh and you could <laughs> it may sound harsh, but yeah. that's the reality. They lost a one score game in which they turned the ball over four times against Minnesota. Three of them were from the quarterback. Right. This game was a game that they controlled the entire first half defensively, but yet couldn't capitalize whatsoever because the quarterback kept giving the ball away. And so, yeah, things unraveled in all aspects down the stretch in the second half, particularly that third quarter. But uh, that game has a completely different feel, a completely different tone going into the second half. If Nebraska does what they're supposed to do and does really anything besides constantly give more life to Colorado, whether it be the turnovers or the the dumb penalties uh, or the the special teams blunders, shank punts, missed field goals, like uh, pretty much – Everything that they needed to do to lose that game, they did so in two of the three aspects of the game. Warren uh, comes in the super chat here too, guys. Kind of a harsh comment here from Warren. Uh, I blame hiring unqualified people on offense and taking a Joe Burrow approach to the transfer portal. We need to stop hiring cronies and buddies on the staff. And I don't know if, if he's just talking about Jeff Sims kind of had the connection, obviously, with the Temple, uh, you know, the, Jeff, the call, Coach Collins, the former coach of Georgia Tech, was at Temple, and there was a connection to Satterfield and those guys, and that's why they brought him in. Okay. But I, I'm not sure anybody could have drawn up this type of a disaster story. We knew Jeff Sims had a turnover probably early in his career, and he got a little bit better each year, but nobody could have thought Nebraska would be minus six, eight on the year. Sims now has four picks and three fumbles, I believe. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I I mean, here we go. I mean, we gotta we're gonna we're gonna be hard on Sims today. Um, it, he's not the only problem, but he's the biggest problem. It's the thing I, I, I'm interested in what you guys think about this. You have a new head coach in Matt Rule, and one of his I mean, one of his first most important decisions, one of the mo- most important decisions right out of the gate is what? Getting the quarterback position solved. Right now, correct me if I'm wrong, it looks like he botched that. Now, how does that affect your overall confidence in that head coach? It it looks like they've they've botched the quarterback position right out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's no, no, no. Is, no, am I overreacting? Is that the question? I don't think question. so. Because you have two games of uh, evidence to support that, to where now that's it's now become a theme where – quarterback is the most posi- important position on the team has now become a liability to where you have to try to win in spite of mistakes being made by that most important position. And, you know, I hate to just come bag on one player because you're right. That offensive line didn't play well today. Not really. I mean, they didn't, I mean, they only gave up a sack, but they didn't get the push that I thought they were going to get. I thought that was going to be one of Nebraska's offenses 
best advantages was mm-hmm. their physicality and size up front would eventually wear down Colorado's defense and they were going to be able to control the ball on the ground. You saw glimpses of that where they had a couple big runs and um, kind of started to get things going and then they would turn the ball over and all the momentum would shift back over to Colorado's side and eventually as good as the defense played, it became too much to overcome. You're joining us here on Husker Online's uh, post-game show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sippel, Robin Washett. We're in Boulder, Colorado, and Jeff Sims left the game with an ankle injury, wanted to come back in, um, but on the same series, we saw Heinrich Harburg, then he lost his helmet. We saw Chubba Purdy. Um, There really is no defined pecking order, it feels like, and I I really feel like it is a significant drop-off after Sims. That's the problem. I mean, I I don't know if the world's problems would be fixed for Nebraska if they just switched quarterbacks to Heinrich Harburg or Chubba Purdy. I I think Sims' athletic ability still gives them their best moments. And we saw that moment that got the game to 13 to seven, why he's their guy. Uh Uh, But then just, just things like the, the ball, I mean, dropping snaps, like who drops snaps at this level? Well, I mean, I mean, Matt rules, he supported his quarterback. He stood behind him in the post game. He said it might've been a cadence issue that was loud. And he, he's have to go. He wanted to go kind of dissect what happened there. What I say about that is you guys, come on, we're, we're, we're veteran guys. We've been around stadiums all over the country. They're loud. Things happen. It's wild. There's going to, it's not always what I'm trying to say. It's not always going to be perfect, right? It's, there's going to be things that are a little off and the quarterback has to act absolutely has to catch that now sean regarding what you said there is a pecking order harburg's number two he's number two i asked clear number two yeah i asked rule about that um and now he's number two in part because chubba's been hurt undisclosed injury chubba did play but he's been hurt so there is a number two it's harbor i don't i just wonder about their comp i mean rule said in the post game they never considered making a change Mm -hmm. Now, that's pretty now that's that's really important to understand that he never considered making a change now i was a little taken aback by that it probably indicates a lack of confidence i would think maybe in the number two right well and the quarterback position is different than any other like you can bench your running back for fumbling a whole lot easier than you can bench in your starting 100. quarterback the guy you've invested your entire offense around like that that's the difference for me people are asking you know why does one rule apply for anthony grant and doesn't apply for jeff sims that to me, that's that's the situation because the quarterback is such a more delicate situation to where, you know, you're you're running the risk of uh, you know creating a, a ripple effect one way or the other uh-huh. uh, by making that move. And can you go back? What if you bench him uh-huh. and and then you start Harburg and Harburg has the same issues? You're not getting any better. Do you go back to Sims and then all of a sudden you're playing this quarterback yeah. carousel situation and uh, you're you're no better off than when you started. So I. I that's for me why my answer for this issue of why Nebraska seems to have a different set of rules for Sims compared to everybody else. It's because there is such a significant drop off between him and, and and that next QB Harburg or Purdy, whoever in the coaching staff's eyes. And they want to make sure that they have no other option, but to turn the page officially, if they decide to make that move, they don't want it to be any gray area. All right, we got a few super chats. I want to get to uh, Daniel Elliott chimes in with a comment. I am a broken man, a part of a broken fan base cheering on a mm-hmm. broken team. I'll throw a go big red in there, yeah. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that I mean I get that. That and, and I don't. There is. There's a lot that goes through your mind after a day like this, after a game like this. It, zero and two is not what you what you wanted or needed. Uh, the way it's transpired has been really dispiriting, really dispiriting. Now, I want to go back to the offensive line. Some people, Rob and Sean, are going to look at those numbers, those rushing numbers by Nebraska and say, okay, it wasn't that bad up front. They rushed 41 times for 222 yards. That's 5.4 carry. Yeah, 83 of those came on two runs, and 90-some came in the fourth quarter when the game was already decided. The second part of that's more germane to me than the first part. That, those 83 count. Yeah, no. Those long runs, you don't say the don't, consistency wasn't yeah. where I thought it was. But you be. don't minus long runs; those count. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know that the pass protection. How, how what did you think of the pass protection? Uh, it's all right, wasn't it? Yeah. Eh. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't say. Well, it was I'm great. asking. I'm not. It wasn't yeah, glaring. They only gave up one sack. Right. I thought it was two. Was it two? two? You start. You're right. Yeah, it was two. 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 You're right. 
All right, I got to get. I'm gonna before I get to another super chat here. Um, I do want to welcome one of our sponsors. Um, the show, uh, post game show, brought to you by Home Field. Um, Home Field is a premium collegiate athletic apparel brand based in Indianapolis. They emphasize their commitment to creating incredibly comfortable, officially licensed apparel. Uh, with their vintage college designs, they feature a growing collection of over 150 colleges to choose from, including, of course, Nebraska. Home field designs are super unique because they delve into the archives of history of each school using unique logos, mascots, and I- iconic moments to create a thoughtfully designed apparel. They are all about authenticity and nostalgia. Um, you, know, you look at their gear, guys, great stuff to buy. If you're looking to get some stuff to wear to that first home game next week, uh, we've got a great deal for Husker Online listeners here on our show. Go to homefieldapparel.com. Use promo code HUSKERS23. You'll get 15% off. That's homefieldapparel.com. Promo code HUSKERS23 for that 15% discount. But uh, let's bring in this next uh, super chat from Senor uh, Chief. I think I got that right. Um, I uh, I don't blame the defense for giving up. I would too, after time and time, putting your body on the line for a QB who can't score. And you got to think guys, there is some truth to that. I mean, that defense guys played lights out for the first two and a half quarters, much of the game, much of the game. And they wore out a little bit. And the dam kindly, the dam finally just broke at, at at some point and and they just ran out and it it, it was unfortunate to see. It was that third and long when the Colorado hit that big play that kind of opened the gates a little bit. In the third quarter. Yeah. When, when Nebraska just scored on that big Sims run, cut made a one score game again. And Nebraska had a third and long third and 10, I believe. I can't remember. Then they gave up that big chunk play down the sideline where Sanders threw a perfect ball okay. and had the guy wide open. And then all of a sudden, that kind of broke the top off a little bit for Colorado started doing Colorado things. They're getting the big chunk plays that they weren't getting through the first two quarters plus. So that that to me is kind of when the defense, the totality of everything they had to try to overcome with the situations their offense and special teams put them in finally caught up to them. Guys, this is a good defensive unit. I mean, I, I think when you look Nebraska. at Nebraska, the pass rush – I mean, there were some stats that really got your attention. Like Cam Lenhart was the first fre- true freshman to have two sacks in a game since Barry Turner. And I sure remember Barry Turner. We talked about him as a great pass rusher as a freshman. Mm-hmm. They haven't had a guy like this. And and you saw some other guys come in and make plays like Makai Bear. I mean, he comes yep. in and sticks guys. as a He's a third-year guy. I was talking to somebody, one of the parents before the game, and we were talking about him. And he was a kid that was going to leave the program, and they convinced him to stay. And look where he's at now. Riley Van Poppel got in this game today, got half of a sack. That was a real promising Big. sign. Big. Sewell Lapitu recovered a fumble Big. at the end of the game today. So there is a lot of promise on this defense, not with just the veterans, but the youth, too, coming up in this program. Yeah, absolutely. There, There is a lot to like about the defense. I thought it was a better defense than TCU. I, I mean, maybe it goes without saying. Um, after what Eight co- sacks. Right, after what – yeah, eight sacks after what Colorado did to TCU, then watching this game. Oh, come on. I mean, this is why, that's why the conversation is going to keep winding back to Sims. I, yeah, as a, as a human being, I feel for him, but he knows what he knows the business he's in. I mean, this is when you cost your team two games and they're two, I mean, these are two big games. I always catch myself. I always catch myself here. It's, it's the first two games of Matt rules coaching tenure. I don't want to. I think we all have to sort of guard against overreacting. I'm not sure we are overreacting, though. I these are two pretty. These are stinging losses. When we complain about, oh, they had to go on the road and play two tough games, guys. It's not going to get any easier. This Big Ten conference is going to have 18 teams. There's a chance someday they could play 10 league games. Yep. Um, Nebraska is going to have to play tough games like this oh, always. 100. I mean, there's no more eight conference game scheduled days anymore. And right. Protect of the Big Ten West going forward. I mean, you're going to play everybody in games like today. That's going to be the Big Ten every week. I agree. Now, the people are going to want us to get into this quarterback discussion. we got a super chat on that. Let's get to Joel's on that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Joel has a super chat here on the quarterback, Sip. I am a little drunk, (laughs) but you have to roll with Heinrich Harburg next game, right, Sip? Well, I have to, literally. If Sims has a high ankle sprain, he might not even be able to play. Yeah, it was that that com- that conversation sort of complicated by the fact that Rule said he wanted to come back in. Mm-hmm. So you wonder maybe it's not that bad. Oh, we'll find out. We'll find out in the next few days. Yeah. Um. Right off the bat, I want to address that the Lamar Jackson thing where I I got hammered. I mean, 
yeah, I was wrong on Sims. More importantly, Rule was wrong on Sims. A lot of um, people were. Yeah, let's don't make this about just simple. I mean, it's all your fault, <laughs> yeah, by the I, way. I, I, I mean, the whole thing. Yeah, I didn't. Hey, you were the biggest advocate for Casey Thompson of anybody. Thank you and for I, saying that. And yeah. I was the first guy that jumped out for Sims when they took him. I right. but I had the feeling that they knew that was, this was their guy. I know that's the see that Sean. That's the confusing thing. They were very convincing. Think about the interview we had with with Satterfield in Belton, Texas, when he was glowing. He had glowing praise of Sims. Man, he's got a very, very, very strong arm. He is. He's. You know, he's fixed his issues with accuracy and he's fixed the turnover thing. I mean, I, of course I bought into it. And the other part of the discussion is the season's a, a long way from over. Now, here's the question I have for you guys, though. Do you have faith that he can make a big rebound now? Not right now. <laughs> Not right Corey, now. Corey chimed in on the super chat. Who drops snaps at this level? Sean Callahan said. Forgot how many years of Adrian Martinez we had. Well, in a lot of Adrian snaps, I mean, Cameron Juergens missed yeah. them. I mean, a lot of them were sailing over his <laughs> he head. He did missile them. I mean, he <laughs> missled a few. He did. This snap, these snaps weren't that bad. Now, what, what Matt Rule is suggesting that the snaps came, took him by surprise, took, took Sims by surprise because he couldn't hear because um, it was so loud. Again, I just don't. I don't want to hear rules say a lot of that. Yeah. This is college football. These are they're going to play in gargantuan stadiums that are super loud, and you, of course, it's going to be a little unwieldy down there. And the crowd is on top of you here. I mean, this the crowd is as close to the action here as really any stadium would go to. And can we give voice to the fact that this place was a was a madhouse today? Yeah. I mean, it was a mad. I mean, we, the press box was so crowded, like we were sitting on each other's laps. Yeah. I mean, it was a busy stadium. Yeah, I mean, when was. the student section was allowed, I mean, even outside of the stadium, like I couldn't tell if they just got up early and started drinking or just continued to drink through the night because they were fully tuned up. Like when we got here at around like seven, seven thirty, like it was, it was impressive that that 10 a.m. start didn't seem to do much to deter <laughs> the energy of the. It was CU gorgeous day, weather yeah. too. That helps. Yeah. Now this was, is, and I want to give voice to this too. This was different than 2019. It was in that there was it was much louder. There was much more energy. In this is my opinion. Now I heard from some people who disagree, but whatever. I don't. I I saw a stadium that didn't have nearly as many. Nebraska. Maybe maybe ten thousand. Yeah, not nearly as many in Nebraska fans as 2019. I, I would say ten thousand tops. And then what do you think it was in 2019? Well, it was like 50,000. It was like it was, no, well, it was 25, 30,000. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I would say of the yeah. 50,000 there, over half were Nebraska. Today, you had this general Nebraska sections. You had some. And, you know, what was crazy about 2019 was those – we're looking outside right now at those 200-level, uh, kind of nicer club-level areas. That was all red. Like yeah. the highest boosters of Colorado sold those tickets to but, Nebraska, fans. and they didn't this year. And those were taken, and and that's the Dion effect. Oh, Sean, one hundred. I mean, that Dion has it's taken real. this place by storm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, to 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 be in it, to be in the vortex of the storm, you really feel it. You really feel it. All right, Evan, uh, thank you for chiming in. This uh, five dollar super chat, no comment. Just uh, th threw five dollars to the show. Thank Appreciate you. you uh, Evan, oh, he does have a question. Okay. Losing is one thing, but if it's continued in nepotus in these losses, that is so heartbreaking and frustrating. So many unforced errors, and we feel you, Evan. It's been the same. I mean, go through them. Punter, punter shanked one. Uh, field goal off the right upright. Uh, penalties. It, uh, what like else? The Prohaska penalty was random. That yeah. was random. And they got out of that hole, but you know, a snap off of Linda Meyer. Where he's where number forty four for Nebraska goes in motion and the ball hits him. Or how about a twelve yard Come loss on. on a run by Ramir Johnson? Yeah. I mean, where the O line just got. I mean, it looked like a tidal wave came through the O line mm -hmm. and he just got. Tackled. There were a lot of those plays. So like the the, okay. the two sacks looks good on paper, but like the tackles for loss, even when they weren't going for loss, there there was a lot of disruption in Nebraska's backfield before the ball carry even got the ball. Yeah, and I'm and I just want to make it clear to you guys, I'm not signing off on the lines play. People are going to look at that rushing total and say it, it couldn't have been that bad. Um, but, yeah, Colorado did have six tackles for loss. Nebraska, by the way, defense, 11 tackles for loss and eight sacks. That was the most they've had in a game since 2018, Nebraska-Colorado, Scott Frost's first game as a head coach. Hmm, interesting. 
Um, before I get to our next super chat here, guys, uh, want to w- welcome in our other sponsor here. Thanks again to Bauer Underground for sponsoring the Husker Online post game show. Bauer Underground is helping shape Nebraska's infrastructure future and is looking for new members to join their team with open positions for laborers, equipment operators, aerial linemen, and foremen. Bauer Underground is searching for the best in construction. BauerUnderground.com to learn more about career opportunities and industry-leading benefits, including competitive pay, employee paid health insurance, disability vision, um, life insurance, 401k match, new top-of-the-line equipment, and a clothing allowance. No experience is needed to work for Bauer Underground. Uh, Bauer will train the right people. Uh, They will get you going. Visit Bauer Underground on Facebook to view their testimonials, hear about their experiences in the company culture and the importance of their work. Bauer Underground is family-owned as Stu Bauer and his family live right in Norfolk. They've got locations around Nebraska. For more information, check out their Facebook page or visit BauerUnderground.com to start a new career today. Uh, But Warren here on another Super Chat. Sorry, guys, for the negativity. I tease, but you guys keep me going. Off topic, how how does it feel about the Bellevue West kids now that their season is so tough for them? I mean, he's talking about the Bellevue West guys. Um, losing to West Side, it sounds like the, the, Devon Hall got hurt in that game with a wrist. Isaiah Morris has got a hamstring injury, and Daniel Kalen hasn't lit the world on fire. And that is a big piece of this first recruiting class for Matt Rule. It makes a good point there, Warren. Yeah, I mean, you, you just keep looking at the quarterback position. I'm not not that I would expect Kalen to come in and. I mean, we don't, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves on that. It's just a quarterback discussion. That's the thing. That's gonna that's gonna be the preeminent discussion going forward i I, it's going to be really interesting to see how rule handles this yeah um because i it just looks right it i know i'm kind of beating a dead horse here i i just want to ask you guys if he mismanaged this position like it looks like what does it do how, how does it impact your confidence in him <laughs> it's a really hard yeah. question yeah, it I is. mean that that is a critical piece because you're right. That was the first big domino that needed to fall when when Matt Rule was hired. You need to go get quarterback, and this mm-hmm. was the guy that they went out and handpicked. Well, and they they had that worked on exactly. for a while. That mm-hmm. that wasn't just worked. In my opinion, th- this wasn't like orchestrated in like a week's time. No, I think the the chips and the pieces were moving pretty quickly to get get him here to Nebraska, which underscores the indictment <laughs> if, if it doesn't work out. I mean, this was thought out. This was calculated. This wasn't, oh God, we got to get somebody. There's that kid at Georgia Tech. It doesn't, I don't, it never had that feel to me. And Sean, now this is where you got to give voice to the, the Casey Thompson thing. Casey, okay, left on May 10th, but he was injured in the spring. So he never threw a ball. So he never would have got an opportunity to compete in the spring. We thought maybe that there would be a quarterback competition in August. Now, this is what the question I have for you. There wasn't, a competition in August because Casey left in May. Do you think Casey, do you think that they basically told Casey probably best to go elsewhere? It seems like it was a mutual. Yeah. It, it just felt like they, he didn't, the, the way he, they wanted a guy that could run too. And they didn't like Casey as a runner. He wasn't a great runner. I mean, that was the one thing you could say, like he was a serviceable runner, but his body wasn't built like Sims. Absolutely. To run. Um, so in, Here's another uh, super chat comment on Sims, by the way. Uh, and this is from Cornhusker Corner. Sims is not a QB. You got to bench him. It's a matter of accountability. Grant didn't play, to, uh, by the way, guys. Didn't um, play. He could, be, um, he could be a tight end, though. Harburg looked decent in there at tight end. Wait a second. Who, who's he saying could be a tight end? Yeah, I don't know if it, Grant could be. Sims. Sims. Oh. Sims could be a tight end. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I think he's a quarterback. Well, it's not to, to, to me. It sounds like they're sticking with him. Let's make that clear. Yeah. I mean, I'm 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 going forward right now, thinking he'll be the starter against Northern Illinois on Saturday, unless he can't play because of his ankle. Because of his ankle. Yeah, and you know, it's not really a, a matter of if I think it's the right decision. I think that's just what's going to happen. I mean, Matt Rule, he stood up for his quarterback today. He did, and in, in a situation where. You know, he could have easily thrown him under the bus after the way not only today went, but the first two games. And he said that there was never a, like you said, never a, an opportunity that we were going to pull him out until he got hurt. And so that's that says to me they're going to keep riding with him, even as bad as these first two uh, appearances have been. Now, are you guys concerned at all about mixed messages from the head coach who who told us in August that you can't play if you turn the ball over? 
and he and they bench Grant. Now again, Robin, you're right. If the quarterbacks, the quarterback is a different position. You treat it differently than all of the other positions. So that's probably the answer to that question. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the only answer yeah. at this point is that the rules for quarterbacks don't apply to everybody else. Grant, <laughs> Grant did <laughs> not play. Does that at least this you? QB room? Does it surprise you that Anthony Grant never I saw think the field? They went in with the idea that it was going to be a heavy Gabe Urban day with Ramir Johnson as the third down back. Yeah, that then was they got behind and Ramir started taking over the snaps. And Irvin's numbers were decent. I'll give you his numbers. Um, Gabe Irvin ran 17 times for 74 yards, 4.4 per carry. Not bad. Got loose a couple times, had a 26 yard carry. I thought Gabe Irvin looked pretty good. Now he's, I would just say he's a pretty good back. I'm not going to go any further. He's a pretty good back. Yeah. I mean, he needs reps. He needs to kind of get into a rhythm. And today was, he got a little bit of rhythm, right? Got it. I mean, second quarter, it looked yeah. like it was going to start coming down. I know. That's but when it looked when, like it was turning. When the quarterback can't take snaps, and they hit the ground and you fumble, it kind of turns things around. But that's what hey, we were in the press box, and I distinctly remember our conversation. Hey, second quarter, zero, zero. I, I told you guys I feel pretty good about this. And then he dropped the snap yep. and Colorado recovered. So simple is the jinx. <laughs> the jinx. Um I, and then and then he threw the pick. Yeah. It unraveled late in the second quickly. Quarter. Yeah, it unraveled. Cole um, has a, this is a super chat comment here uh, in, about Colorado and Dion. This proves that it doesn't take time to build a program. <laughs> and I, I think the thing with Dion, we're going to see, can he sustain this? Right. Or is it, I mean, like, oh, I want, right. Like, not just for this season, but from year to year. Like, if, could his son go pro after this year? <laughs> keeps playing like this. I yeah. mean, <laughs> okay. Is he a pro quarterback, do you think? I sure looks like They're it. They're already me. talking about him as one. He, he, today, I I mean, there were times where I thought he looked a little average, but his final numbers are excellent, 31 of 42 for 393, yeah. two TDs, zero picks. His numbers through two games are magnificent. Yeah. He threw for 510 yards against TCU, okay? And then he came back with 393. He's going to probably lead the country in passing yards. He's got, a, he, he's got an excellent cast of – of receivers obviously and today it was xavier weaver that got nebraska 12 or excuse me 10 catches for 170 yards jimmy horn eight eight catches for 64 travis hunter three catches for 73 those three are really good now really good those three guys are really good players all right now we did know that we did know coming in and i knew going into the season because i Talk to Brian Howe of the Boulder Daily Camera for our opponent preview during the offseason. And he emphasized, look, they got they have skill guys. They're, and they have he liked what they had like as in terms of edge rushers. But that's what he said. They have, they have skill. And they and he thought Shadur Sanders would be the best quarterback here since Montez, or as good as Montez. Now, is he as good as Montez? I'd say he's better than Montez. Yeah. He's I, better than anybody could have projected. Yeah, yeah no. I think he's better than Montez. I'd, I'd be interested to ask Brian Howell of the Boulder Daily Camera what he thinks now. Montez was pretty good. I like this guy better. Yeah. All right, Danielle throws in a $10 super chat. Danielle McAdams, thank you uh, for your support of the Husker online show. And uh, she's got a question. What was Matt Rule's Achilles heel in Carolina? It was quarterback play. I think a QB coach should be paid like a coordinator. An offensive coordinator should be a separate position. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like a QB coach and an offensive coordinator have two separate coaches. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Frost did that. Kind of, kind of like what Verduzco was. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm open to that. I don't know if that's. I don't know. It's. There's so many ways you can build a staff. Like, right. I mean. It, I, I don't, I mean, this is, this is all about it. To me, it, in some ways, the conversation is pretty simple. This is all about a quarterback at Georgia tech who came in here with 30 touchdown passes and 26 interceptions. Okay. And you just thought, because you were kind of convinced by this staff that he could, that he could change, that he could evolve, that his game would evolve. Now, what I've seen and what everybody's seen through two games is that I don't think his games evolved much. And the thing now, this is where, again, I, I always I always wonder what you guys think about this. This is an intangible that sort of bothered me today about Sims. He seems, and I don't want to make it personal, 
but he seems awful casual, awfully casual to me. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't see a quarterback with a lot of fire, right? Not all do, not all have that, or, or they have it in their own way. I don't even, I don't really see it in any way. Am I, am, is that going too far? Like, are you saying almost it's like this is a, a job for him, a paycheck? Almost looks like it. To where me. it concerns me a little. People, bit. I mean, just think about the pain and people around the state, how hard each loss feels. I mean, did, he obviously, you're saying, doesn't really feel. Oh, no, no, no. I, no, I'm not saying, Sean, I'm not saying he doesn't feel that pain. But on the field, I don't seem, he's very calm. But I wonder if he's a little too calm is what I'm getting at. I mean, the, wh- where was his focus? I'm talking about focus on those drop snaps. Mm-hmm. Is, was his focus where it needed to be? Was it was the moment too big for him? Was that it, or was it a, a lack of focus? I mean, didn't you ever? Did it ever occur to you at Minnesota those those a couple of those picks just to me looked like lack of focus? Yeah, and we telegraphs passes. He yeah, didn't go through his reads. He locks in on a guy. The defense easily tracks it, and he throws it right into their hands. That happened again. Yeah, where he made it, he makes it easy on him at times. I'd like to see a little more fire from it. All right, before we get to our next super chat, the show and segment brought to you by CHI Health Clinic, 40th and Yankee Hill Road, their brand new facility in Lincoln. Check it out. Uh, it's so important to have a relationship with a primary care provider, uh, a doctor that you can go to, talk to about just different things going on in your life. Uh, CHI Health is a great place to look, uh, particularly that location there on 40th and Yankee Hill Road. Uh, they offer a lot of great services. You can get x-rays done. They have a pharmacy on site. Um, they cover a lot of different things uh, for orthopedics, um, diff- just lots of, you know, not just uh, thing. And if you're feeling not feeling well and you need to go see a doctor because uh, you, you have a cold or a sinus infection, you can go in there seven days a week, um, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in their Care Now program and be seen immediately and, and get a jump start on whatever you're trying to battle, even if it's on a weekend. So check it out. CHA Health a proud sponsor here of the Husker online show. Uh, check them out at 40th and Yankee Hill road, especially at their brand new location here in Lincoln. Um, but let's get dream in digital super chat comments in here. Just want to say thank you for all you guys do. I'm sure games like these on the road probably aren't very fun for you either. Glad the next one is at home. And, and you're right. I mean, games like this are tough for everybody. I mean, I, I'll tell you what, I feel it when you see all the fans that travel and the investment people make, the way they stop their lives, everyone in Nebraska today, everyone's watching this game, and to have a performance like we saw today, that's what's disappointing to me. When it means so much to so many people, but it doesn't translate to just fundamental things on the field that should be able to be prevented. And especially for that to happen on these two stages, to mm-hmm. where you're open in the season on a Thursday night, everybody's watching. You know, it was one of the highest rated games of the weekend. And then it's to play like that on offense in a game that you should have won, but the offense prevented you. And then you come on to this stage where Fox big noon Saturday, you know, Dion's opener, like literally the college football world is watching right. this game. And you literally just give the ball to the other team. You drop the football and, you know, the defense is playing so well. And you got fans that despite this being such Colorado hype still showed up in mass it wasn't 2019 but there were a lot of nebraska sure. fans here oh exactly. and you know they they traveled as always they spent a lot of money to come out here as always they supported their team as always and once again they were rewarded with absolutely nothing except embarrassment oh, they there were some guys that played well i was just saying yeah you think a couple of the individual performances make up for a 36 to 14 loss no, on no, television not real i, I mean think so I'm, I, I work pretty hard to find a bright side. It was it fun in some ways. It's really fun. I mean, it's really fun being in a stadium that's jam packed. Like when that Buffalo ran out of pregame. Oh God. I mean, I'm like, God, this is freaking cool. Oh yeah. That I Ralphie, mean, just the, the Ralphie, scene. I mean, yeah. I'm like, this is why we do this job. We're sitting here on a Saturday at 11 AM and here's Ralphie trotting up across a field. The Deion Sanders coaching his first game at Colorado against Matt rule packed house. I mean, it was unbelievable. Right. That's what I'm getting at. I mean, I, I do watch other games, and I, you notice teams playing in pretty empty stadiums. Um, you you see that in the Pac-12. Well, you see, I don't want to single out the Pac-12 because they're really that that league's really playing well right now. But I, I watch games where it's not they're not there's not interest like this. Nebraska will have a sold out stadium next week. It, we're lucky. We're really lucky. I feel lucky to be on this trip, but I do feel for Nebraska fans right now. 
It is not easy right now to be a Nebraska fan. Mm -mm. I thought with Rule, a lot of this, this, those types of issues that we're referring to would be cleaned up. The embarrassment. Yeah, the snap. You know, the snap off number four. Silly out there. Yeah, the snap off number forty-four in motion. I mean, come on. Um, so I guess stuff happens, but they then they have they, they, again. They've had some dumb penalties, um, and then they, of course the turnovers. And you know what? What you grade the special teams today, Sean? A D. You gave him a D. I non-factor. First I mean, game against Minnesota, special teams were excellent. Today, oh, kind of. You know what back. really got me was here's Colorado kicking off from the twenty yeah. after that penalty where the Shador Sanders took his helmet off. Yeah, I'm like, okay, you're gonna get a kick, good kick return. Yeah. And Ramir Johnson let it get over his head, and then they Just took a touchback. I mean, they gave up 10, 15 yards of field position there probably. Point. I mean, D. Just, gave him a D. Like, I don't know. I mean, like, some of those things just weren't up to snub. And Alvano's kick, he missed it. But the penalty or the miscue before that knocked him back further, mm -hmm. which, you know, if he's two yards closer, he probably makes that kick. Probably. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot of – it wasn't now we should make that clear. It wasn't just Sims. And but but wouldn't you agree that most of the issues were either offensive issues or special teams issues? Yeah, and not know, a lot of issues on defense. Yeah, the defense wasn't perfect, but that's because they were putting one terrible situation yeah. after another one and after having another. to dig them. Kind of fire out. drills. Yeah. And they for the most for the first half, they responded better than you could have possibly imagined. Now, right. outside of taking the football away, they did everything they needed yeah, to they do. They didn't do that. They haven't done that yet. I know. All right, guys, I got eight super chats stacked up. Ripple. Here, so let me Ripple. get through some of these Ripple. here. Regardless of whether um, or not Sims can go next week, Heinrich Harburg needs to get some snaps. His first throw was five to ten yards past the wide receiver. I liked getting Kemp involved, but didn't see much read option. Great job, y'all. Thank you, Thrasher31. Okay, guys. Okay, here we go. This is what we're paid for. All right. Do you next week, if, okay, let's just paint the scenario. Sims is, Sims can play. His ankle is such that he can go. Do you build in series for number two for the number two guy? Do, do you just do you start that process? No, I think you do whatever you can do to win the game, and if that includes do, mixing things up a quarterback, then yeah, sure. But like it happens, though, this Rob. is not a situation where they have no more wiggle room. They ha they cannot afford to experiment and try out new packages and games right now. Like maybe if you get a big lead, but. I don't know if I necessarily see that happening at this time. <laughs> no, so. Hold on. No, now I I I don't know, Rob. I'm not convinced that you need to start sort of the process of even if it what what if I paint it paint it this way, Rob? You 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 build in a series or two in the first half for the number two, if nothing else than to send a message to Sims. Look, no. you don't have carte blanche here. If you keep turning it over, you're done. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just gotta send a message. Right? Am I wrong? Yeah, I just, I just don't know what this offense can be though. Like, you have to decide like what is the peak, what is our way to be successful. And I think they thought they had that figured out today mm -hmm. until those early mistakes just threw it off the tracks. So you think today? Well, we we know because I don't want to act like we don't know. Rules said they they were going to pound it at Colorado. That, that that's what that's what they wanted to do and they were, yeah and they were having some success it was working for a while it was working i thought in the second quarter again we we keep saying it but second quarter i thought okay it's starting to work all right jalen irish with a super chat it felt like our running backs were trying to bounce everything to the outside how can we get our run game going between the tackles it doesn't seem like it's very promising rob Irvin's big run was in between the tackles and i thought once they started doing more motion and like 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 counter stuff and that opened things up to where it got Colorado's defense moving. And I think a lot of that too, is they were having some success getting outside too. Like they were getting able, they were able to turn the corner a little bit better yep. than I thought they would. And so they didn't need to necessarily just run straight up and, and smash into guys. They were having some success turning the corner a little bit to get a few more extra yards, but I don't know. I'd say some of their better plays were runs up the middle guys, Tom with another super chat in here. Um, um, Tom Lapari, and he brings up a great point. I'm all of a sudden pretty worried about NIU and Louisiana yeah, Tech be. coming. I mean, this could be, of course, a um, Georgia Southern. For I mean, at, you're right. I mean, <laughs> sorry, what just fell? My phone. Okay, <laughs> I don't need it. Head coach over here is a little yeah. giddish. <laughs> Everybody, hey, everybody's dropping stuff here. Today. Hey, 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 Tom, <laughs> Tom, Nebraska is a program right now where you take you don't take those wins for granted at all. You don't take you don't take for granted anything right now. I just they're not. They're not. 
I can't say that though. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking out on the field today and, and we're talking in the press box. The defense looks real. Yeah. I mean, that is a big, strong physical defense that Nebraska to has. play like that against this offense. Yeah. That's that opened my eyes a little bit. It really where, did. They're so, not just a good defense. They could be a really good. They defense. are. They, it, I want to emphasize big and physical. It's a good the looking. Tackling has been exceptional. Yeah, it's a very good. Yeah, it is. They fly around. They have great attitude. Tackling in space was huge today. Uh, it just Makai Bayer still is like the biggest surprise to me. I you love that, guy. don't you? Like you love that. He came out of nowhere. Like he did. I mean, and all of our preseason and things we did, like we weren't even considering him. We did not. And and not only is he playing, he's making like stop tackles, as they would call it on Pro Bowl. Like where it's a physical hit. Yep. So hit John, you're right. He's good. He's playing. He's playing well. He had six tackles today. Now a lot of the a lot of the guys that were up in the attack up in the tackle totals were guys you'd expect. Lenhart, we mentioned earlier. Lenhart is a, is a dog. I mean, he he is something else. And and I like the way now Prince Will only had one tackle, but man, he he's an explosive young guy. Did MJ Sherman show up on that sheet at all? Know. I didn't notice him at all. He had one tackle. Okay. Yeah, he had a quiet day. Quiet day. Um, Daniel, they need more from the Jack position. Um, Daniel McAdams uh, threw in five dollars on the super chat. Thank you, Daniel. Um, Cornusker Corner with five dollars in here. Oh, Sims could, and he's a liability at quarterback. And we just need a game manager at quarterback. Giving the ball away as often as Sims has is unacceptable. And I think that is a fair point. Go back to 2009 Nebraska when they realized they had a good defense and they had Alex Henry as a punter and a kicker. Mm -hmm. They said, you know what? We could win with defense and special teams and, and Niles Paul returning kicks and punts. We don't need to screw this up with an offense. And they just played super basic, fundamental football. They sure did. I mean, they lined up. Like, I remember um, Sean Watson made the analogy of where I studied Jim Tressel and what he did at Ohio State. Who's on that offensive line? Some pros. Right. That's yeah. that's the difference. That's the difference. They had a lot of pros. Could, yeah. and, and they could do enough. Now the question is, and I don't know. I don't know that you're wrong. I mean, you could try it that way, and see what that looks like if you just really they kind of tried it that way today. It, and Sims Screwed got him out of it. I mean, <laughs> he did. And that's that's kind of what goes to the conversation of if you got to have somebody that can protect the football. That's what it comes down to. Like the playmaking yeah. ability aside, if you're getting one fifty-seven yard run touchdown, but, uh, you're turning the ball over four times, like. That's that's a pretty bad trade off right there. So maybe you go to a, somebody else, a guy like Harper or whoever, and he's not going to give you maybe the ceiling that a Jeff Sims can give you just with his athleticism. Right. But he's going to give you the stability. He's going to allow you to just not lose games with your own offense. The question, of course, is does he show does Harbor does Purdy do they show in practice that they can give you that stability? I don't know. That you wonder because it does seem there's still all I can say is that rule never considered making a change today. Warren, so I, I don't know. Warren Diver uh, comes in with a super chat comment. Shout out to the boy Luke Longville. Is it Luke Longville time? And I actually met Luke's uh, family last night um, around the hotel where we're staying, and very nice people from Sioux City. I mean, this is a guy that was going to be at Iowa Western, came to a June camp, and he's now the four string quarterback at Nebraska. Uh, Sioux City, Iowa native, um, but never say never. I mean, no, could, never say never. I mean, there could be a point where Luke Longville gets into a game this never year. Never say never. And I want to address something too that I, you guys were being pretty hard on Sims. Now, here's a deal though: he's making money. You know, I mean, he's 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 a paid athlete now, financially invested. Yeah, he's he's making money. He's an older player. He's, he's making six figure money. He's making six figure money. He's a 22, 23 year old kid. I mean, there's NFL players that are younger than that. That they're they're susceptible to criticism. He's gonna get it. And I and I I feel sort of I always feel a little bad going down that path, but I don't feel as bad nowadays as I did in 1998 because he's getting paid. He's a grown man. And and, and this is he's cost Nebraska two games. Okay. They That's should the be they should be at least one and one. Right. No I think question. I mean, I'll give Colorado this game. They they they, yeah, they deserve Colorado's it. good. Colorado's they a legit are a lot team. better than oh. I gave them credit for. Oh, wow. Nebraska okay. should have beat Minnesota, though. They should have beat Minnesota. I am not convinced Nebraska, that Colorado's better than Nebraska. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I, I watched that defense. That's a good defense. Now, if, if this if, game was if, in Lincoln, it would have been interesting. If Sims does, okay, go back, if they don't have the turnovers and mistakes, 
it's a big if. I, I'd love Nebraska's chances. And, you know, you're hearing the same thing I am. You're saying the same thing. If Casey Thompson's the quarterback today, I like Nebraska's chances to win a lot. All right, let's I'm uh, just I'm just being real, okay? I'm with you. Our um, last sponsor here of the show today uh, is BetterHelp. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Do you ever find that you're t- uh, having trouble falling asleep? Your brain suddenly won't stop talking? Do your thoughts start racing right before bed or at all opportune moments? As it turns out, one of the great ways to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk them through. Therapy gives you a place to do that so you can get out of your negative thought cycle and find some mental and emotional peace. Uh, might have been a long Saturday for some Husker fans. Maybe oh, yeah. uh, you might need to talk to somebody at BetterHelp um, after watching the game today and, and just want to get through uh, the rest of this weekend. Therapy empowers you to be the best version of yourself, something most of us are trying to achieve. If you're thinking of starting up therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Husker today, and you'll get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash Husker. All right, we've got Three more super chats. Chris Diaz comes in and says, this was the worst loss for Nebraska since the 2001 Colorado game. I don't know about that. Chris. 2019. I mean, the, I can think of some worse ones, actually. Are, are we just talking Colorado losses? Oh, yes. okay. Or okay. Ever? Worst loss to the Buffs. Oh, okay. Worst loss to the Buffs since 2001. Oh, okay. 2019 was pretty bad because it, it literally yeah. U-turned the entire Frost era. No doubt. Like, I agree with and, and just the, the scene. Like, the this was kind of the complete opposite of where this was like a, a celebration of Colorado fans. 2019 was a celebration of the basket fans where they took the stadium over and they were dominating at halftime. And then a flea flicker yeah. freak play just started the snowball and the game completely unraveled. And that kind of just defined what we would see for the next five years. So now wait a second, I want to get this straight. Are you saying that two nineteen, the 2019 loss was, was worse? worse than this? Okay. Wow. They're both not, pretty not, bad not, though. Not pretty bad. They're both pretty, pretty bad. bad. Yeah. yeah. Pretty bad. I mean, God, the 2018 one was bad in Lincoln. Yeah, I mean, bad? they're all bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind oh, of mighty. think about <laughs> yeah, Nebraska. Like they beat Colorado from 2005 to 2010 every year. What? What? what, what y'all no, they lost them in seven. I'm right. sorry, they lost them in seven. Callahan's game there, uh, but then just to, to, to now they've lost three in a row to these guys. Well, it'd be really appealing for the fans if is if we could get in an argument about which are the worst, worst losses. losses in Nebraska. Yeah, let's have a debate. <laughs> What's the most painful moment of your fandom? <laughs> Dylan Witherby with a new super chat here. He feels bad for the defense. It yeah, looked depleted too. knowing the offense couldn't do anything. Thank you, Dylan. I do. I feel I do. But uh, damn it. I mean, you better get the special teams a little cleaned up now. Because if you have – you go on the road and two of the three phases fail you, you're not going to win. I mean, there's – you're, you're going to beat hardly anybody, let alone the number 22 ranked team in the country with a, with a dynamic offense. Ba- failures – uh, in two of three phases, you you lose 36 to 14. That's what happened. Yep. We got a comment here from Cornhusker Corner. Question, is is that is there a game manager on our roster? Well, I think Chubba's a game manager. I don't know enough about Heinrich to say. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to act like I know. Enough. I just don't know enough about Heinrich. We saw a lot of Chubba last year. Yeah, I do think he's a game manager type. He didn't play well last year, but I blame that more on the staff for not having him ready. I blame that on Whip. Um, he didn't wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for the Illinois game. You think back to that, that, that was an unprepared skittish quarterback. Rule has said Chubba Purdy has made massive improvement. Let's see it if he's healthy. Rule alluded to some injury issues that Purdy has had of late, and that's why Heinrich was number two. Yeah, I think athletically, Harburg can be that game manager type. Okay. But what I don't know is how he handles a pressure situation. Right. You know, when when the crowd's on you and you right. need to make a third and long throw, I, I just don't know enough about him as a quarterback at this level to say that I'm comfortable. But <laughs> how comfortable are we with Jeff Sims is, right now? Isn't the notion – this is a column idea, Sean. Isn't the notion of patience really interesting? I don't feel any patience from anybody right now. Oh, am well, I wrong? Because you're watching what Colorado's doing. Yeah. I mean, they, they yeah. literally brought in a team off the street. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And and they beat Nebraska. Oh, I mean, they, they literally signed a team off the streets in and the had summer. two months to get them ready to go. And they beat Nebraska <laughs> with, with a guy that's never coached the power five level. 
it's really, really, really dispiriting. But I, I hesitate to say that this, what Colorado has done is something that other teams can replicate because Deion Sanders is so unique in yeah. what he brings to that position of the, the, the face of the program. Ooh, like yeah. not a lot of guys can have that type of clout and recruit at that type of level and be able to attract transfers and make immediately from the day you sign that contract your school a premier destination on the national level yeah. despite not having any recent success well, those guys he brought in sean sorry to interrupt those guys xavier weaver jimmy horn travis hunter tarverish dawson those are dudes shadur sanders and yeah shadur sanders i i think robin's right i don't not every coach can bring that in and you can't like you couldn't do what he's doing at nebraska like the difference, okay, in Colorado, there's really not a deep relationship with the local high schools and the coaches around here. He doesn't care if, like, he cleans the roster clean and he upsets high school coaches in Denver or wherever because that's not what he's doing here. Like, he, you know, Colorado's football had fallen so far off the map. Everyone here is like, do what you got to do. Yeah. Like, we don't care, like, if you wipe this thing. If you get us to win, we don't care if you get rid of 70 kids. Or, or could I put it to you this way? At Colorado – Deion Sanders can be larger than the program yeah. at Nebraska. I don't think any would it would any I'm, I'm asking you guys. I'm asking our listeners. Would anybody feel comfortable with a coach who's larger than the program? Yeah, it's it's similar to what P.J. Fleck did at Minnesota, where he came in and put oars up on everything. And yeah, like added of, yeah. his whole thing to Minnesota that. Minnesota had no connection to any of that row the boat stuff. And then they just fully adopted it to make it the, true. the whole basis of their program. Now, Dion's doing that at a different level. Yeah, so that's where, the thing. He's not PJ Fleck. He's way bigger. That's than what I'm PJ saying. Fleck, like yeah. th this is this is like ten times ahead of what PJ Fleck. Over is under doing. five years for Deion Sanders in Colorado. Under under under. 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 God dang it! He's gonna get bigger. He's jobs. gonna call us out. Now. He's gonna get NFL. <laughs> <opportunities>. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna hear this. Yeah. Well, he's gonna, yeah. He's gonna keep these receipts. It just depends. What's his goal? What's his dream? Um, we got a number. We got four more super chats. I want to make sure we get these in. Yeah. Yeah. Keep uh, going. Bogo, we got, I got the, nothing to do. Sean. The future looks good for the defense. Young guys are buying in, seeing yep. immediate success. That unit will improve. And a hat tip to Tony White. He's done a great job. Like H hat tip to a lot of guys. Tony White, his staff, and the veteran players and the young players. Now you gotta see if your rule. I guarantee you, one thing he's thinking as he lays his head down tonight is I gotta keep that defense going. I can't. I can't let them. I can't let them be impacted. You know, I can't let their enthusiasm be impacted by these very rough conversations right right am i wrong no, no. i mean you gotta guys like gifford and rhymer and, and the young Lucid. guys that are coming yeah. yeah but i'm talking about leaders i'm talking about ty gifford, robinson rhymer robinson newsome they gotta somehow keep everybody on the right page everybody pulling in the right direction don't have words with the offense don't make it a unit versus unit thing you gotta stay together there's a lot of season left yeah. Yeah. And I think that they have the veteran leaders that, you know, will at least try to keep that internal if there. If there is any sort of those feelings, they're not going to start pointing fingers and start yeah, calling hope guys out because once that starts happening, it's over. Like it is you, over. You we've seen it. Close over. the book on the season. Hey, hey, guys, we've seen it. Over. And Matt rule won't let that happen. I, I, I don't think. Hope I, mean, not. I, I, I think he's he understands what needs to get done and he'll 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 i mean it's it's not pretty though right now yeah here's the thing i mean i there's a part of me man i had to stop myself today there's a part of me that said man matt rule handled this well today he handled the loss well well you know what i'm a little tired of saying nebraska coaches handled losses well yeah. you know I, I mean robin you covered a program where I, i'd say that a lot too oh man he handles the losses so well great I'm done with that. I don't care how you handle losses. That's not a great trait for me. Mike Riley handled losses as well as anybody I've ever seen because he was very used to handling losses. Mm -hmm. I, I, I almost wish yeah, that you never want to be comfortable with losing. No. On a um, much lighter note, Jeremy <laughs> in the super chat has a hard hitting question here <laughs> oh, from the road. Heavy? Would I be too heavy? Better steak, gentlemen. Murray's or Boulder Cork? We didn't have steak. Well, we had prime rib last night, and like we kind of had a whole different game plan. So Boulder Cork had a happy hour menu that went till six, yep. and it was like this huge menu of things kind of discounted, and, and one of them was prime rib. So we got prime rib on the happy hour menu. It was really good last night. Oh, we are. I mean, I'm. I, I say three for three because Indy 
you got St. Elmo's Indianapolis for Big Ten Media Days. We got Murray's in Minneapolis and Rob, me and, and we all three went there. You with your family, me and Rob together on a date. And <laughs> and it was it was that steak was memorable. And then last night, oh God, the I border, thought the sides were good last the night. The boulder cork came through in a big way. I thought that what was it asparagus or Brussels broccolini broccolini bro- <laughs> that green Broccolinia. stuff was good whatever that was, was <laughs> the green stuff was really good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean like it. Jeremy Pruitt when he didn't know what asparagus was on, on one of those NTVs like that green stuff yeah. whatever that was it was really good. <laughs> uh, Senior Chef brought in a uh, comment here on Super Chat. Well, Matt blamed the crowd noise for Jeff's mistakes next week, Robin. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. excuse then, yeah. especially when you're in a situation where it's you're an absolute must win situation. Uh, all of the pressure, all of the spotlight and criticism is going to be squarely on Jeff if he if he's able to play in that game. And if it happens again, you know, then this whole conversation that's already red hot right now it's red becomes hot. unavoidable to where <laughs> I don't know how much longer you can keep trying to push it down the road. Like something will probably need to be addressed if. The same Jeff Sims we've seen from the first two weeks comes in in the home. Opener. Think about this. Think about what we're doing right now. Do you ever stop that step back and think about what we're doing? This is not what you wanted to be talking about after two games. No, a quarterback crisis. I mean, I we're in that's crisis what it, that's mode. That's what it is. We're full. You know what, guys? We're in full blown crisis. Ten million mode. people watched today. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't just buried on the BTN. No, nope. FS1. No, nope. I mean, this was freaking. This wasn't on Peacock. This was the biggest stage of the day. And, and Nebraska, two games into the Matt Rule era, is in a full-blown quarterback crisis. Yep. And you can't blame that on the previous staff. Nope. No. I mean, nope. like you can't say, oh, because of the – No. Mean, the transfer portal lets you bring in your own guys, Q and Point, Deion Sanders. I mean, they, they brought in a whole team, and no one thought this would work. God damn. And, and they don't turn it over. No. Sure. How about that two point conversion play? Yeah. Now they called it off, but holy cow, I mean, that incredible. was like micro gear yep. Heisman type play. It was. Yeah. He's got a lot of talent. He took his helmet off too. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, he said he did it because the game was personal to him for all the uh, disrespect that Nebraska apparently threw his way. I didn't notice a lot of disrespect. It seemed very cordial to me, but yeah. find your motivation where you can get it, I guess. I mean, Nebraska, I thought, approached the week well. They they were very reserved in their comments. Just went about their business, and it looked like it looked like it was going well. With with about five minutes, five and a half minutes left in the second quarter, I thought, okay, this is starting to turn Nebraska's direction. And then boom, boom, the tide turned so fast, and it was self inflicted, self inflicted. Um, I, yeah, it's really frustrating. Warren Diver with a super chat. I'd like to be more patient if they walk their impressive talk. Focus on turnovers, win the red zone, run the ball. Sims is a triple threat. It hurts. Oh, it hurts. Yeah. I mean, because all the things that this new era was supposed to be about, we just really haven't seen. Yeah. I hope that people understand offensively. We're, this is, this, this isn't, no, it's not, not like loud. No, nothing, nothing is. This is really discouraging for us now we have to be professional and just cover what it is and believe me i wish we were covering two and oh right now i mean it would be a, how exciting would that be but we're not and we'll just have to size it up for what it is which is what we always do all right one it looks like we have one more super chat uh, we have two now yeah keep them uh, coming sean joshua lawson has an over under on matt rule over under for matt rule years at nebraska is five what do you guys think I just don't want to go there. It's I mean, too it's early. It's too early to say. Yeah, and all due respect to the question. His contract is built to like be here longer. Than yeah, he's two games into an eight-year deal. Right. Like <laughs> Nebraska and Trev Alberts want him here for the long haul. So things would either have to get really, really bad to where they have no choice but to move on and pay an absorbent amount of money and another buyout, or things are going to get really good and Rule's going to have other opportunities to go somewhere else to where you know maybe he moves on. Now, now somebody could point out that we were pretty quick to to judge Prime in that regard and say he won't be here in five years. A little different situation. Yeah, I mean, I say that because he's going to have really big opportunities. I, I think so. I would not be surprised if he gets an NFL opportunity. Now, that's – but, Robert, you're assuming that they will continue to win. Yeah. Well, you think, I think like the Arizona Cardinals would hire him? They got Cliff Kingsbury. Good point. 
I mean, good point. Deion Sanders or Cliff Kingsbury? I mean, I yeah, know. I, I don't know. I, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm with Rob on that, but it's all predicated on the notion that he keeps winning. And I, I don't know when they get into Pac-12 play. The Pac-12 is salty this year. They're going to play USC and Oregon, and those those teams are et cetera, Washington. That's going to be tough. I still think his style fits the college game better than the pro. Like okay. the pro, the head coach is not the star. Right. The players are. 100. College game, the coach is the star. 100. In most cases. Yeah. But even, even Lincoln Riley is still a star at, at USC. Yep. I mean, you think about Nick Saban, and a lot of these guys never – Steve Spurrier, they were the stars in college. They tried to go. It didn't work. Yeah. Well, you we can say this. Kyle Riley was pretty well coached. Yeah, I mean, they – Pretty well coached. And, and their moments of self-destruction, like penalties, that they, they could get away with them. They were up by so much they could celebrate and yeah. taunt. And that was kind of on brand. People were probably happy with those penalties. Yeah, this place was wild. I want to – I want to – I, like, I can't underscore that enough. That We were in a wild stadium today. Like, they got a – penalty for all those guys coming on the field but i'm sure prime's like that's a good penalty yeah it's almost like they're like the new miami you know where they're embracing yeah. that brash oh yeah attitude where, where they're just gonna brash. have swagger for days and they're not they don't care if they get penalized for it because they're so good right that they can't they can get those penalties that's the thing it's Rob. part of their brand miami was good i know like old oklahoma barry switzer was a brash coach brash but his teams played their ass, ass, asses off, excuse my language, and practice like that. And you've heard pr- people like Urban Meyer, and I've seen video. Those pra- Colorado's practices are hardcore. It's not just it's it's not a joke around here. And I think, see, I think these fans have picked up on it. I, I think that they're they're like, okay, this is real. This is not this is not reality TV, Sean. This isn't the Kardashians. This is this is real. <laughs> Kardashians. <laughs> Right. Dash, dash, yeah. Yes. That, them, yeah. <laughs> them too. Add that to the list of <laughs> problems. <laughs> problems. Good thing we got uh, Makai Bayer's name. Done. Good job on that got one. That one right yeah, here. But uh, finally, some more super chats. Andrew Bird, NIU lost to FCS number 24, Southern Illinois. Jeez. Does that hurt or help the Huskers that NIU's coming in with a loss? All I know is Nebraska needs to play a game and win. Yeah. I don't care how it happens, who it's against, just win yeah. a dang game. We're we're past the point of worrying, worrying about what your yeah the quality of the win. Just get a win. They got to, hey hey the just answer to that is Nebraska's got to take care of itself right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, they need to worry about their opponent. They got right. plenty of issues in their own locker room and right. on their own field that they need to. Worry right. about. Ken has a comment here um, with two super chats. This game was over before they took the field. I don't agree I don't, with that. I mean, Nebraska settled in and came out. Yeah, and they should have been up two scores. God bless halftime. you. God bless you. Is it Ken? Ken. I, I I appreciate you weighing in. I just don't agree with that at, at all. I I think they started to turn things the in the second, second quarter. quarter. I do. I'm going to keep saying it. And they got screwed by their quarterback. All right. Mark has a comment here about Sims. If he turns the ball over versus NIU, how loud mm. will the Boo Birds be? Uh, and, we've and, seen I it. I mean, it it will happen. I mean, yep. I think there will be that kind of that disgruntled groan. Yep. The the, the, the murmur. Thinking as a boo. I've talked to you know you know who talked some sense into me a few years ago, Ron Brown, on that on that booing on the booing discussion and fans expressing their displeasure, and he said they have all the right in the world to do it and you know nebraska was struggling at the time and he said there is so much financial investment and emotional investment and physical investment that nebraska fans put forth to follow this program they absolutely should be able to to express their displeasure with what's going on i I, he really talked sense into me on that and they those coaches understand and i think they well i I don't want to say it's uh, they accept it, but I'm sure a guy like Rule understands. Yeah, and if if this carries over into a third straight game, oh boy, who's going to blame Nebraska fans for booing at that point? Well, like it's almost becoming at that point, it would be a disservice to the fan base. Like you're almost, uh, I'm not right word for it, but like you're you're acting like they can't see with their own eyes what's happening, and you're you're trying to get them to believe that the product that you're putting out there at the quarterback position, that's your best option. Okay. Now if there's nothing else you can do and you just got to live with it. Okay. Now, so there's two separate discussions going on here. You can lose 
again, this are good. These are good talks. I get column ideas out of this. You, you can have patience with the program without having patience with the quarterback situation. That's what we're talking about because I still go back to that word patience. Don't you have to be patient with rule? This is two games. No question. I, I think the biggest thing is basic things though. We're, we're talking about guys dropping snaps. Yeah, just fundamentals. The ball, throwing interceptions. Those are preventable things that Deion Sanders should figure out how to get it done in his first two games. It's fair. And and Sims is a Sims is a veteran player. Yes, he was worse than Nebraska last year, Colorado. Yeah, <laughs> they're way worse. <laughs> they lost by an average of twenty nine point one points per game. That yeah, this is frustrating. It's, you know what? It gets more frustrating as we talk about it. Unfortunately. Yeah, what I wrote in my lead after the and game. What did you? I write, go. Probably. I can't help but to think what Nebraska fans must be thinking right now. Under first-year head coach Deion Sanders, Colorado added over 70 new players to its roster. It was an approach unlike we've ever seen in college football, and Sanders now has the buffs back in one year. Sanders has taken the buffs from the laughing stock of the Pac-12 to the talk of college football. God, good Meanwhile, point. the Huskers opened their season with two straight weeks on national TV with winnable opportunities against Minnesota and Colorado. How did any respond to first-year head coach Matt Rule? 24 total points on offense. And eight turnovers. Yuck. Is that your lead? Yes. That's good. That's good. Good job. That's that's frustrating, though. We've got another super chat from Ken. Keep them coming. This is our final one that we have in the queue right now, so we're probably going to wrap the show up here soon. Has anyone noticed a difference in offense from the last five coaches? Same story. No identity. Can pass block. No. go. No go-to plays. No identity. And, Ken, I think it starts with the offensive line. And if you don't have tackles that can protect on the edge in this league, meaning can they handle a four-man rush? We're not asking them to always handle the blitz, mm -hmm. but Nebraska has not had offensive lines that could even stand up to simple three- and four-man rushes. Yeah. I mean, go back to last week where you're giving up sacks against a three-man rush. Oh. Like, those, those, that sets the tone for everything. So you can have your issues at quarterback, but a lot of those issues come from not feeling comfortable in the pocket and you're overthinking things because you're worried about – you know, having to make high pressure throws because you didn't run the ball well on first and second down. So you're in bad situations. And so that's, it's all one big kind of connected chain a little bit. An offensive line is a huge piece to that. Okay. In defense of the offensive line today, wouldn't, wouldn't you have liked to see what this game looks like without the turnovers? Yeah, of course. Well, I think it would have looked okay from an offensive line standpoint. Yeah, I do. I, I think that, that changed everything. I think they started to get downhill. I wrote it in my notebook. They're starting to get downhill. And then again, everything, everything got thrown out of whack. They got thrown out of whack. Look at happened. Look at what happened in the third quarter, guys. The quarterback, Jeff Sims, took off on a 57 yard run. And boom, Nebraska's within six points. It's 13 to seven, right? Then things just went awry again. He had another bad. We haven't even talked about the handoff that that was dropped by the running back. But I, but from what Clatt said on the broadcast, I guess it was more Sims' fault. He didn't get the ball in his belly. Yeah. Again, on that's on Sims. Yeah. Um. So the go to the question though, like it's the you know comparing not just the offensive line or the quarterback, it's the, the collective play that we've seen where it's the same mistakes it's the same issues it is. it's the same kind of can't stay out of your own way <laughs> stuff where that's so maddening for nebraska fans that you know you you want to try to blame one coach or the other but it just continues to happen now again it's it's got to always preface that it is game two of the matt rule era like I, I, yeah. this is a, a ideally a long-term vision you look at his track record Year one has always been rough, mm -hmm. and this is falling right in line with that same pattern. Now, uh, year is. two, and by the end of this year, <sighs> this stuff, it's got to stop. But it's got to stop. But Rule himself said this isn't Temple and Baylor. Rule himself has said in passing, when we get to a bowl game, he feels like they have the guys. Oh. This wasn't a broken – pro. well, I mean, I got I to gotta watch it. I got to watch it. I mean, it wasn't a ravaged program. They had just, you know, it came off of a season where they beat Iowa in the final game, an Iowa team that was had designs on playing. In well, the and they had their easiest schedule they've had in years last year. 
I mean, Nebraska was favored in five of their first six games. And they, but they weren't losing terribly. It wasn't, I'm just saying it was the program wasn't in shambles. It was a 3.1 team GPA, which is, was a record. I, I, I don't know. God, it's complicated. All right. It just seems compl- too complicated to me sometimes. Final question, thoughts here. And Warren, you've been great on the Super Chats for the entire show, so we thank you for your support. I got my mic clipped off there for a few seconds, so I apologize for that. There, Who are all out of sorts? But Warren says, thank you for the shows. My last request, gentlemen, give me hope. Go Big Red. All right, let's do that. Rob, start. The defense and the amount of youth that is making immediate impacts. That defensive line and those young players, Cam Linhart, Prince Will, uh, Riley Van Poppel, go down the line of, of young guys that are making immediate impacts. That's something you can build around. When you've got a, a defensive line that's already playing at that level that you can develop, who knows what that's going to look like in a couple of years down the road. And you pair that, if you have a defense that's playing at this level, as long as you're not turning the ball over four times a game, you're going to have a chance. And so that's that's the reason for hope. If somehow Nebraska can figure out a way to not consistently shoot itself in the foot on every offensive possession, they're going to have a chance to be in games with the way that that defense is playing. And then down the road, the youth that they're going to be able to develop on that side of the ball. All right, that's a good one. I'm going to, I'm going to say I'm still pretty bullish on that running back crew and the idea that Nebraska can get that going consistently. Today wasn't that bad. Gabe Irvin, again, 17 carries, 74 yards, 4.4. I thought he looked very good at times. He's a pretty good running back. Ramir Johnson, 11 carries, 66 yards. Six, that's six, six, that's six per carry. Now, I, I, am not, I am not a fan of what they did to Anthony Grant today. I, now, maybe he didn't practice well this week, but – uh, come on, he's a good running back, and he and he he would have helped you today. Well, because the coaches put him in that position to put him in the game last week. So yeah, they did. It is what, what it think, is. John? What, what's your why do you why are you optimistic? Well, Sean? first of all, I, I would like to see Nebraska have some games to build a team properly. I don't think it's very easy, and we've learned this the last few years. When you open with conference games and games like this to uh-huh. start the year, uh-huh. you don't really have any margin for error. It's a great point, and you're on the road, like. Nebraska's never going to get a Thursday night opener in Lincoln. They, they're just not going to because they're always going to play Saturday. So that, that was, and then just the way this is all set up, it's really, really difficult for oh, yeah. a coach to come in and here's your schedule. Go play. Oh yeah. Now, so what you're suggesting, and if you are, I think you're suggesting this. And if you are, I agree with you in this case, this would have been a good year to start with Louisiana tech. Yeah. If you could have just had, I would be so curious right. if Louisiana tech and Northern Illinois were the first two games, right? And Colorado was three, right? And Minnesota four. Like, if you flipped it, would it be different? And I think it might be maybe one more win in there. I know. I I, I and, don't think that's wrong to bring that up. It, it's exciting. This was exciting playing Minnesota and Colorado. But I think for a first year staff that's that's building, that it would have it would have been much more advantageous to to ease into it and then get Minnesota and Colorado. Yeah, it's a lot easier to figure out what your warts are and adjust around them against yeah. that level of competition at home uh-huh. as opposed to playing conference games and, oh, and this nationally ranked sold out games places. on the road on national television. Well, when you play right. games on the road at places like this in Minnesota, I mean, first week of school, it's great weather. I mean, the student sections are really, Holy really impactful, God. too. Holy God, that was impactful. Both places. I mean, oh yeah. Now I would say today. I don't know. Would you say today was louder than Minnesota? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, like you said, Robin. I think they They were were partying all night, and they. I. Hey, listen. I was outside the stadium for a large chunk before the game. Oh God, they were revved up. Those kids coming in. All right, um, Jeremy. um, Final thought from Jeremy here in the super chat: The West is still gettable, and you're right. Nebraska still own one in the West. They. A lot of season left, guys. A lot yeah, of season. So that's, that's optimism. I appreciate that. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, I know it's not been the Saturday you wanted, um, but, but we appreciate the support and the super chats and the comments. Uh, we had four to five hundred comments in our in our comments here during the show, and Seems thousands of viewers uh, watching us live across the world. So uh, we appreciate you helping us make this. Uh, one of the bigger post game shows out there to to chime in on Nebraska football after the game. Uh, we will be back with Husker Online headlines and the Husker Online show next week, Tuesday, Thursday. We'll hear from Matt Rule Monday. Um, make sure you get on HuskerOnline.com. We got a great special right now. You can get a membership 
50 uh, off gets you a year for fifty dollars um, for fifty percent off on the on that or one dollar for your first month. So give us a try at huskeronline.com. And if you want to listen to us on the podcast version of the show, we will have that available as well on the Husker Online podcast channel. For Robin Washett, Steve Sipple, I'm Sean Callahan. Thanks again to our producer, Megan Guttner, on the back end of the show. Uh, Signing off here in Boulder, I'm Sean Callahan for HuskerOnline.com.